Good morning. I'm Asan Giordano, and this is your DMV Daily Dose for Thursday, December 19th, 2019. It's currently clear and 19 degrees in Baltimore. Today's high will be 30 degrees, and the low will be 19. The breaking news overnight was that the House of Representatives voted to impeach President Donald Trump, becoming only the third American president to be formally charged under the Constitution's ultimate remedy for high crimes and misdemeanors. The historic vote split along party lines, much the way it has divided the nation. It was over a charge that the 45th president abused the power of his office by enlisting a foreign government to investigate a political rival ahead of the 2020 elections. The House then approved a second charge that he obstructed Congress in its investigation. That no Republicans voted for impeachment and Democrats had only slight defections on their side. The vote for impeachment was 230 to 197 with one absent on the first charge. While it was 229 to 198 with one absent on the second. Now to mark the moment, voting was conducted manually with ballots. And while Democrats had the majority in the House to impeach Trump, a vote of two-thirds is necessary for conviction in the Republican-controlled Senate. The Articles of Impeachment, the political equivalent of an indictment, now goes to the Senate for trial. Now, if Trump is acquitted by the Republican-led chamber, as many expect, he would still have to run for re-election for president in 2020, carrying the enduring strain of impeachment on his purposely disruptive presidency. Quote, the president is impeached, Pelosi declared after the vote. That's Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. She called it a great day for the Constitution of the United States, but a sad one for America that the president's reckless activities necessitated the House having to introduce articles of impeachment. This was reported on by the Baltimore Sun. Now, the breaking news locally last night was the sudden resignation of 45th District Delegate Cheryl Glenn. Now, this was reported on by both Maryland Matters and the Baltimore Sun with differing takes from both of them on when her resignation would actually take effect. But yet neither one of them seemed to be able to figure out the reason behind her sudden resignation. First elected to the House of Delegates in 2006, the 68 year old Glenn, a Democrat, serves as chairwoman of Baltimore City's House delegation and previously led the Legislative Black Caucus of Maryland. She has been a vocal proponent of legalizing marijuana for medical use. And the state's Medical Cannabis Commission is named after her late mother, Natalie M. LaPrade, after she successfully passed the legislation a few years back. Glenn also recently led an unsuccessful effort in the most recent legislative session to allow Baltimore school police officers to carry guns while patrolling during school hours. However, members of her city delegation that she chaired voted 10 to 5 against the bill. Now, before entering politics, Glenn actually worked on union and labor issues, serving as a personnel officer for the city school system in the 1970s and the 1980s, while going to work as a lobbyist for the city teachers union from 1997 until 2003. She is the fifth state delegate to resign since the end of the of the legislative session in the, in April of this year. Now, the District State Central Committee will have to come together and meet to vote on her successor, which DMV Daily News has heard was being led by a former state delegate candidate, Lindsey Jackson, with Central Committee member Jasmine Collins nipping at his heels trying to get those necessary votes. We will definitely report more on this as we find out more on who will be the successor to Delegate Cheryl Glenn. We wish you all the best. Well, it seems like Council President and Mayor Hopeful Brandon Scott is continuing his pathetic attack of a black businessman and philanthropist, J.P. Grant, after he failed to gain any traction at yesterday's Board of Estimates meeting when he asked the board to delay the master contract that Grant Management has held with the city since 2004 citing an investigation of grant management underway by the Baltimore Inspector General Isabel Mercedes Cummins. The investigation that Scott himself 
as to be launched after reading a Baltimore Brew article. Scott, however, could not even get a second to his motion. Mayor Jack Bernard Jack Young and his two appointees, City Solicitor Andre Davis and Deputy Public Works Director Matthew Garbuck, remained silent as did Comptroller Joan Pratt, as they simply ignored Scott's pathetic political ploy. Mayor Young signaled his displeasure with just a motion by briefly shaking his head as he stared down at his phone. I'm definitely sure we're going to hear more about this ongoing pathetic saga. And last but certainly not least, the state prosecutor announced yesterday that a criminal charge of perjury is being lodged against former Baltimore Mayor Catherine Pugh, alleging that she broke the law by failing to disclose her Healthy Holly Children's book business on financial disclosure forms during her time as state senator. Now, the state charge followed Pew's federal indictment and guilty plea just last month on charges of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government, and two counts of tax evasion involving the self-published children's books. Filing it in Anne Arundel County Circuit Court, the charges allege that Pew reported other business ties as required, but did not disclose her interest in Healthy Holly, LLC. It says that the omission was, quote, pursuant to a common scheme and plan to conceal the nature and extent of her business. In a press release and statement issued by state prosecutor Charlton Howard, he goes on to say that transparency from our elected officials is an essential aspect of protecting Maryland residents from corruption and political malfeasance. Our office is committed to ensuring that those who abuse positions of trust in our state and local governments are held accountable by the state of Maryland. Now, I'm your man, Mr. Politics, and this has been your DMV Daily Dose for Thursday, December 19th, 2019. For more information on the articles that I've mentioned, just go on over to that website at www.dmvdaily.news.